Raider Nation, happy Friday. What's happening with you? It's Scott Branson back with Silver and Black today. A special Friday mailbag edition. Yeah, a separate show just for your mail. We got phone calls. We got texts. We're going to get to those today. We had a bunch of them again. We're getting so many. We want to make sure we get our folks out there uh, and even repeat calls that were heard on Thursday's show, yesterday's show, if you were with us, but also on today's. So we're going to get into it. A lot going on, obviously, with Raider Nation. By the way, video brought to you by our good friends at BetUS. Remember, if you want that 150% sign-up bonus on your first deposit up to, again, up to uh, $2,000, then check out our friends at BetUS. All you got to use is this code, folks. It's a promo code. We make it easy for you. We're here giving you free money. YouTube 150, that's YouTube 150. Start playing today. 150% sign-up bonus. And not only that, on your second and third deposit up to $2,000, you'll get 125% using this code as well. So make sure that you check out our friends from BetUS. They're the ones who bring us uh, the video of the show. So make sure you go check that out. We want to help you out make some money, right? Make some money this weekend. Uh, anyway, but we're back here. We're talking football. We're talking Raiders football. We're talking mailbag. Raiders, of course, have the Chiefs on Sunday. Big game. We talked about it a lot yesterday on yesterday's show, but we want to get into some of your thoughts again. Lots, lots to share. Lots of people talking out there. And I want to make sure we get to those. By the way, we are an Odyssey Sports original podcast. Do us a favor, if you would, please. Subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your audio. Yes, rate and review, and make sure that you uh, check in and, and have fun there. You can listen to us in the car while you're working out. Shout out to my good buddy, uh, Rock Raider, out there. He's always listening to us when he's working out. He sends us his smart watch, like, like my Apple Watch here. He sends his watch out, shows us what he's doing on the on the treadmill while he's listening to, to, to us. So we appreciate that very much. So do that. Also make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel wherever you're watching us on video. So thanks. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to get right into the calls on this special mailbag only edition of Silver and Black today. No, it's not the mailbag from Thursday's show. This is a separate mailbag. So I want to make sure we get it out. By the way, if you want to be part of it, 702-900-7869. That's 702 900 Seven eight six nine to get on silver and black today. We're getting a lot of calls on Sundays, right during the game, after the game, whatever's going on, which is fine. Had some great calls halftime last week. Calls after, whenever you want to call, just leave it. You can also text us. I'll read the text. You'll see. I'll read text today. Got some really good texts. So some people like to do it that way versus call in. But either way, seven zero two nine hundred. 7869 is the number. Of course, the Raiders, we talked about a lot yesterday. Desmond Ritter signed. Uh, he was at practice, got emotional talking about getting cut with his family. Good kid. Remember, I'm in Cincinnati. He went to the University of Cincinnati. I saw him play. Really good uh, good guy. Had a child and got married when he was in college. So he was taking care of a family while he was playing football. And so emotional for him to go from being a, a third round pick with the Falcons to then going to the Cardinals, you know, you try to settle your family. For those of you out there who've been in a military family or business oriented, and my family's moved a bunch around. So you know that it's tough, you know, you got to get your family. So he was uh, emotional talking to the media yesterday in the locker room, but a uh, good guy. I like Desmond Ritter. He's not the savior for this franchise. Don't get me wrong, but I would like to see him do well here. His problem has been turnovers, fumbles and interceptions. So we'll see if he can, rectify that here um, under Luke Getze. We'll see. We all know we feel about that, and I'll let you guys talk about it here in just a minute. All right, so we're going to get into the calls. The first up is Zach. Zach's calling in, and he wants to talk Raider football. So here's Zach. Mr. Mo and Scott, this is Zach, Z711 uh, on Police Report. I, go, I comment sometimes on Mo's uh, live streams. Awesome. Man, tough year this year, but you know what? I like I've told a few of my buddies, uh, look, Telesco killed last draft. Um, I have no reason to think that this year won't be even better. We got a ton of cap space. You know, everything's looking good. My main thing is, and I know everyone's talking about quarterback, of course. You know, obviously we absolutely need a quarterback. More than that, we need, in my opinion, we need a better offensive coach. And I look mm -hmm. at, you know, look at Clint Kubiak, went to New Orleans. All of a sudden, Derek Carr was, you know, falling out doing his thing. Came from the Shin Entry. So did Slowick over in Houston. Um, you know, Kevin O'Connell had kind of similar 
upbringing, him and McVay, look what they do. Sam Darnold's out there looking like a franchise quarterback. My thing is, if I'm going into the offseason, more than anything, whether we keep AP or not, I personally am still kind of – I love AP. I'm undecided, obviously. We need a great offensive coach, and I feel like with that, I don't want to say it doesn't matter as much who the quarterback is, but I'd rather have a great offensive coach with, you know, a guy like Darnold than a bad offensive coach with, you know, Cam Ward. We trade up and, you know, give up all these picks to get Cam Ward. We're not going to be in the top four or five, in my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't think so. Um, I don't think we'll be in a spot to get either Ward or Shador, you know, even Jalen, who knows. I commented on one of uh, Bo's things. I want Jaunty from Boise, from Boise State, the running back. <laughs> I look at him. I, I just envision an offense with him and Bowers. You get a quarterback that can just facilitate with those guys. You get a creative, young, offensive coach, and you'll score points. And, you know, whether that's Jaunty early, you know, top ten pick that we get, then you trade up bottom round one, you get a guy like Quinn Ewers or, you know, one of these guys – Crafts a bet at the combine. You get someone else that, that slips. It happens a lot. Uh, get one of those guys. Still get a young quarterback. Man, we just need playmakers and a great offensive coach. Anyways, love listening to you guys. Go Raiders. All right, there's Zach. Zach, I think that's your first call in, so thank you very much. Although, hopefully you'll call in again after I say this to you. I think you're dead wrong about the quarterback situation. I understand, and I don't disagree. I actually agree 100% with you on offensive coach, right? Mo and I have talked about that here on the show. You mentioned Slowick in, Den- in, uh, in Houston, excuse me. Um, Kubiak in New Orleans started off well, but they have completely fallen off the cliff. So I don't know that you can include him anymore, but I get what you're saying. That's what we said when Getsy was hired. We thought it was an underwhelming hire, and sure enough, that's proven to be true. Not because we wanted it to be true, but that's how it's rolled out. So I don't disagree with you. They need to get... If Antonio Pierce gets to the second year, which I still think he has a chance to do, uh, despite a rough, rough, rough start, you have to get an offensive mind in there. And to me, you need a – it's a quarterback league, Zach. It just is, right? I understand what you're talking about, the kid out of Boise, the running back, um, which I hope my Rebels beat the crap out of this week. They won't beat the crap out of them, but hopefully they'll, they'll beat them. They're playing them at home. It's really uh, a big, big game for my alma mater, who uh, is 6-1, and one, so we'll see how it goes. But anyway, y- this is not the NFL of the 90s. Um, running backs, you just don't, as good as he could be, and he might end up winning the Heisman. Um, I don't, you don't build the offense around a running back anymore. You have to, you, I don't think you get away with a facilitator quarterback. Sam Darnold's year, now Sam Darnold was written off by everybody, right? But if you look at it, and I talk about this all the time, and I'm not always right, but I've been a right a lot on this, is, the quarterback coming out of college don't always make it. And a lot of the reason they don't make it isn't because they don't have the talent to adjust. It's the coaching. I mean, look at Sam Darnold, the Jets. Nowhere. Then where does he go? Carolina, terrible situation. Now he's finally in a situation where he has good offensive coaching, a good head coach who knows what they're doing, and he's having a good year. We'll see if it continues. As we're talking today on Friday, they're still talking about maybe trading for Matthew Stafford, which is, you know, here you are, you only have one loss. Your quarterback's having arguably started off as having an MVP season type season. And they're talking about trading for another quarterback. That tells you how valuable quarterbacks are, especially those that have won. Now, remember though, Zach, remember, you got to remember this. <laughs> You might look at Darnold a certain way. Darnold was a, a, a first-round pick. He wasn't some fourth-round guy who's facilitating. He's a, he's a first-round draft pick. He's a top-of-the-draft guy who's just starting to come into his own, at least this season. We'll see. Again, we'll see if it lasts. But nonetheless, so, so I disagree with you there. The kid from Boise would be a great player. In this day and age in the NFL, though, unless you're a team that already has their quarterback, their offense is set, and all you need is a running back, you know, if you're somebody where you're like Kansas City or somebody like that, where you could trade up in the draft somehow and get that running back, okay. But I just think you got to go with the quarterback. And the Raiders have to get a quarterback. They can't wait any longer. They got to try and take a swing, or this thing will never get right. So, but Zach, thank you so much for the call. Great call, man. Appreciate your thoughts. Please call in again. All right. I'm going to do a text now before we get to the next call. 
So you're going to have to deal with me reading a little bit here, uh, which I can, I can read pretty well, so we'll see that. But this one uh, I like a lot as well. This is from our buddy Tori in South Dakota. So Tori in South Dakota writes in, he says, Scott and Mo, I love your show and your objective opinions. Thank you. Not everybody does. I appreciate that, though. That's okay. Every week, it's the same thing. I take that back every week. They come up with a new way to let me down. Okay, so I wasn't super excited about AP getting the job because I felt like he was too emotional. It would make bad decisions out of emotion rather than logic, the Dan Campbell effect. But he was making the right decisions by bringing in Marvin Lewis and Tom Coughlin to help him with decision making. I don't know if they aren't saying anything or if he's not listening, but it's not working. If it's not the poor game management decisions, not knowing when to call timeouts and when not to going uh, or not when when not to go for it on fourth down or not, that's then that's the saying stuff that the press that should be a private conversation with people inside the locker room, blah, blah, blah. Basically saying there, sorry, I misread that, talking about um, calling people out in public. So Tori's saying don't, you know, AP shouldn't be calling pe people in public. He's a great motivator, but someone else should be in charge of the game management and press conferences. And for God's sake, stay off social media. Nothing good can come from it. I agree with that. Uh, head coach has to do uh, press, press um, conferences. And, you know, overall, I think he does okay there. So if Mark Davis needs me, I'm available. <laughs> Tori wants a job, Mark Davis. I was once told by a mentor of mine that a great CEO knows his weaknesses and surrounds himself with people whose strengths are where his weaknesses are and listens to them when they say something. It pains me to say this, but obviously we are not going anywhere this year. Maybe we should talk to Max and see if he could set up a one-year deal with Detroit so he could take Aiden Hutchinson's place since he'll be out for the year and give Max a chance to get a ring with a team from his home state. That's Tori in South Dakota. Um, Tori, I understand what you're saying there. So a couple of things I'm going to pull out of here. Number one is the last thing. I don't think in any world you should trade Max Crosby. Just don't. I don't care if this team was over. You don't trade Max Crosby. You just don't. I just don't think there's any point in it. I understand you're, you want Max Crosby to taste victory, but Max Crosby wants to taste victory as a Raider. So I respect that. And you got to build your defense and keep your defense built around him. Um, as far as the coaching stuff, I've said this on the last couple shows, and a lot of people, oh, you're a hater, arr, 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 and all kinds of other stuff about, yeah, Marvin Lewis being there, Tom Coughlin. And I just say they're collecting paychecks because either he's completely not paying attention to them and they're doing their best, or there's just nothing going on there because it doesn't show. I don't see growth from game to game. That's my concern with Antonio Pierce. I've said it all along. People got on me, well, just because of the last game. No, not just because of the last game. I'm going back to preseason. Some of the mistakes you saw coaching-wise, time management, game decisions, those have been happening through almost every single game. Okay? So, to me, I, I, I'm there with you. I understand it, and it's, it's concerning. And you have to see that turn around. He's got time to turn it around. Look, the Raiders aren't making the playoffs. But you can see progress, which would give you confidence that your coach is learning and can, can improve so that next year you can get an offensive coordinator to help him, a really good offensive coordinator somehow, uh, and then he retains his job. If not, then he'll be one and done, and the Raiders and Tom Brady and Tom Telesco will go out and look for another coach. But I'm with you, man. I understand it. And again, uh, I appreciate, Tori, you writing in. Uh, you have the last couple times, and we finally got to one of your texts. So thank you very much for that, Tori, in South Dakota. As you know, Raider Nation is of course everywhere all right we take one more call then we're going to take a break and then we'll come back and finish out uh your texts and calls next call comes from matt in pennsylvania here's matt in pennsylvania on silver and black today hey silver and black today this is matt calling from wilkesbury pennsylvania uh been a fan of the raiders since 1990 um so been a fan for quite some time uh i have to say this season has much in common with other forgettable seasons, such as 1996, <laughs> 2004 through 2008, 2012-2013. In other words, it is a season where there will not be many wins in the win column. But um, bright spots. Uh, Got to say, Brock Bowers is a great pick. Hoping to see him on the team, putting up stats, putting up wins for us. Uh, DJ Glaze, very impressed with um, this fine young man's work on the offensive line. i uh, got to say, JPJ is pretty impressive, aside from some of those penalties he committed. I, I definitely think 
he may be the starting center possibly later this season, if not next year. I think he's doing pretty solid at guard, too. Uh, Jacorian Bennett, very impressed with how far uh, he's come since last year. Um, perhaps he may be uh, our future you know, lockdown corner. And Isaiah Palomal, definitely impressed with him. Um, and, it, you know, it, it's kind of bad that um, he had to step up when somebody else came went down, but definitely impressed with his work so far. Uh, some disappointments of the season so far. Uh, man, what, what, what happened to Jack Jones? I mean, just <laughs> really disappointing season so far. Just so many penalties, getting blown in coverage, bad tackling, just really disappointing from him. Uh, the run game, obviously. Um, I mean, Madison is slightly better. Uh, I don't think he's a RB1, but uh, the running game is basically non-existent and then how about how about the penalties they're just really disappointing compared to last year i mean uh there just seems to be an increased amount of penalties every game but um i think unfortunately what we really have to look forward to for the rest of the season or i guess the biggest question not so much that we're looking forward to it is who's going to be our tank commander is it going to be minchu or now is it going to be uh, Riddler that I guess we picked up? I don't know if it was on the waivers or from somebody's practice team, but or a practice squad. Um, I'd like to know your thoughts. Who's going to be our tank commander going the rest of the season? Thanks. Um, I'll try to call in again soon. Go Raiders! <laughs> All right, Matt from Wilkesboro, Pennsylvania. Thanks for calling in, man. We appreciate your first time. Thanks for listening as well. A couple things. I'll start with your last point there as far as the tank commander, i.e. the quarterback. Listen, I think it's going to be a, a, it's going to be a back and forth. I, I think, I think you're going to see, I would be shocked. I mean, especially with his late arrival, if Desmond Ritter plays in the chiefs game, if he does, it would be in relief. Uh, and, and you got to go with Gardner Minshew, despite that last game and him getting benched and all that. I think that's going to give you your best chance. Now, after that, I don't know. Like after that, I mean, remember Ritter's problem in Atlanta, and again, another situation where I think, and it goes back. It's funny because we when, when Ritter's coming out since I watched him play here in Cincinnati with Trey Tucker, by the way, he was his quarterback. When when you when I watched him, I really liked him. He had some downsides, like every player does, but I really liked him and thought, boy, if the Raiders maybe sneak in and grab him later in the draft, which they did not do under uh, under Ziegler and, and McDaniel's. But um, I, I thought he had potential in the NFL. And I think in Atlanta, he showed that at times. But again, lots of interceptions and lots of fumbles. OK, so the turnover situation is is rough with him. That's his big downside. Uh, and and we'll see if they can improve on that if he gets some playing time. So I think you're going to see a lot of Minshew. I think you'll see Ritter at some point. I just don't know when it could be Sunday, <laughs> although, you know, not having been able to digest the playbook uh, we'll see if he's active uh, or not, but uh, that's the question number one. On Bowers, absolutely. The running game, that's part of the reason why this offense isn't doing well. It can't establish the run. You look at some of the other offenses in the NFL who are doing really well, Baltimore, Kansas City, despite losing their running backs, like Isaac, uh, Isaiah Pacheco, they run the ball well. They establish that run, and and even though Mahomes isn't having a great season so far, they're able to get the offense they need because of that. So I think there's a lot going on there. And I know you said a lot during your call. And I think this is where you got to see development go. And I agree with you on Jackson Powers Johnson. I think he eventually will be the center. So we'll see how that goes. All right, we're going to step aside for our only break in this show. And when we come back, we'll get to the rest of your calls and text messages here on this special Friday edition of Silver and Black Today, the Raider Nation mailbag edition. And a reminder. This video brought to you by our good friends at BetUS. And of course, we're always an Odyssey Sports original podcast. You can also hear us on 101.5 KDON in Las Vegas, as well as 98.5 The Bet in Las Vegas on the radio on Sunday on game days. Don't go anywhere. I'm coming right back. All right, here we are back on Silver and Black today in Odyssey Sports original podcast. Do us a favor. Make sure you subscribe, rate, and review wherever you get your audio. 
And for those folks watching us on video, thanks to our friends at BetUS, where you can get a 150% deposit bonus from us, from them. That's right, up to $2,000, 150% sign-up bonus. If you use this code, it's a special code. It's a, shh, don't tell anybody. No, tell everybody. It's YouTube 150, YouTube 150. Not only will you get that 150% up to $2,000 on your first deposit, but on your second and third deposit, you'll get 125%. So go over there when you get ready to bet your football this weekend or the political race or the World Series, whatever you're betting on, college football, and get that free money, man. Don't wait for it. Go get it. It's awesome. Our friends at BetUS bringing you the video today. All right. We're back. We can get right back to the calls, and we go out to our good friend, the infamous Jacob in Fresno. Good. Jelly, jelly, go, Brent, hey, and many, many, many town, no motion. This is Jacob from Fresno. What's up, guys? So uh, here's what I want to talk about, because I was listening yesterday to the post-game show with Mo, or with Murph, rather. No disrespect to you, Mo. You guys are both some of my favorite Raider people to listen to. Uh, but anywho, the, the post-game Show. You guys are talking about Antonio Pierce, and you, you and Murph are both like, yeah, he's gone. You know, he's, he's got to get out of here. <laughs> Nobody's safe. And I get the, sent- the sentiment. You should, yeah, I have that mindset. Nobody's safe. Nobody's bigger than the shield. But understanding. I get that. But what I want to say here is, wh- am I the only guy who was very excited that Antonio Pierce received the head coaching job, but also did not expect to win? Am I the only guy that was thinking, you know, seven wins might be realistic, Mm -hmm. but Antonio Pierce is also a great hire? Because, guys, here's I I called in on Murph's show, and I I told him, you know, he didn't want to let go of Josh. He didn't want to let go of Tay. You know, and he wanted to go and get Jaden Daniels. He wasn't trying to get Luke Getze either. He was trying to go for Cliff Kingsbury. This guy is making the right decisions. But he's not really in that power place to make those decisions, you know. It's, Tommy T has a lot of pull with the Raiders, and he's doing some good things. But you have to be realistic. You have to look what we're doing. Tommy, it, Tom Telesco is definitely pulling for the future. With all this cap space that he's building up, mm-hmm. man, we have a lot, a lot of money, and we are not spending it. So let's think about it in that Regard uh, Antonio Pierce has made a few mistakes that are are clear, right? You know, with challenges and things like that, calling timeouts and strange places. But Antonio Pierce has also got the Raiders to a place where, you know, we had a bad penalty game last week. That's not very common with us. He's got us playing a little bit different. You look at guys like Robert Spillane. You look at guys like Divine Diablo. You look at Max Crosby, obviously, Nate Hobbs. These guys are still playing very hard. So I know it's the Dan Campbell thing. It's an easy comparison to make. But he still has his team playing pretty passionate. Jack Jones needs to wake up, but come on, guys. Let's not just (laughs) rain it all down on AP. He still has a future with this team. I think he's back next year, no matter what. You guys take it easy. Go. All right, right, Jacob in Fresno. And a couple things, Jacob. First of all, even on that postgame show you're referencing, I didn't say fire Antonio Pierce. I said he's not doing well, and he's not on track to keep his job. That's what I said. And by the way, Mo and I picked them to win seven and eight games. So we're right there with you. And I've said all along, let me get this clear, not for only for you, Jacob, for everybody out there, I have never advocated that they fire Antonio I'm not one of those people out there. I don't have emotion involved here like fans do, which you should. I mean, you're a fan. You have to have emotion. Uh, saying, oh, fire this guy, fire that guy. Now, Luke Getze, different story. That one doesn't seem like it's working, and so I don't see how they're going to make it work. But Antonio Pierce has the rest of the season. But I want to get to the core of what you're talking about here, which is wins and losses. No, I didn't expect them to win more than seven or eight games. I said if they got really fortunate and played out of their heads, maybe they could win nine or ten. Just crazy season, right? So I want to make that clear, Jacob, because if you go back and listen, Mo and I have been consistently saying that since the summertime, okay? But second here is, yes, the team plays with effort. I don't call on the question. You talked about Jack Jones, a couple other players, the business decision thing, that whole thing. Yes, there's some players who were kind of mailing it in at certain times. 
That's a couple. It's isolated. Antonio Pierce doesn't have he has not lost the locker room. No one's asserted that. That's when a coach has to go because if you've lost the locker room, you're done. He has not lost the locker room. He he still got his players. The issue though is, and I think what you're not admitting to is that oh he's made a mistake here and there. No 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 no. There's been lots of mistakes, and it goes back to the preseason, and they're the same mistakes being made over and over. The game management issues, the time management issues, those things are troublesome because, remember, he hired Marvin Lewis as assistant head coach to tutor and mentor him because he wasn't experienced. Great move, smart move, but I don't know what that guy's doing. I don't know what they're doing because they continue. he's continually making bad decisions. The other thing is we talked about penalties. They went from last year – um, they went in 2023, the Raiders averaged 4.4 penalties per game. As you know, that was pretty dang good uh, uh, and, and one of the best in the NFL. This year, okay, they are at an average of six. And in the last three, they've averaged 8.3 penalties. And of course, the last game they had 10. So there's, there's an issue there. Now, injuries, that's part of it. It's not all Antonio Pierce's fault. Don't get me wrong. But the Raiders are not close in these games. Now, it appears close at times, but look at the double-digit losses. Now, they came back against the Rams. The Rams are a team in a much similar position as the Raiders, except that they have a quarterback, in, as far as injuries go and all kinds of stuff. But as Mo and I have talked about the last couple of weeks, Jacob, on this show, because you listen, it's not like they're losing by a field goal or, and they're late in the game and they're close. That's not what's happened. That's a bad sign. Because you go back and you look at some of these other teams who had coaches and eh, you give them time because, look, you're close. You're, you're, you're really competitive in these games. They're getting boat run at times and not by good teams. So I disagree with you there. Look, I'm not saying he's going to get fired. He's got the rest of the season. And again, for the, oh, you're rooting against him. No, I don't root. <laughs> I just tell you what I think. You could disagree with it, think I'm wrong. That's cool. Like, I don't care. That's what this is all about. But I will tell you this. I think that if you continue to see them lose by double digits all season long, you know that doesn't go well for him. And it doesn't matter. All the other elements. When he took the job, he knew. And I also am going to push back that he doesn't have any say in anything, okay? Because the idea that, well, he wanted this guy and they wouldn't let him keep him. No, well, that's part of the game. No, Look, people were delusional if you thought Josh Jacobs was going to be back. I, we said it here on the show all along. He would not be back. Mo was a little bit, well, if he does this, if he does this, if he takes a cut, he didn't want to take a pay cut. He wanted out. And you can't help him. I mean, he just can't blame him. So so that one, the, the Cliff Kingsbury thing, they only offered him a two-year contract, not because of money, but because that's all they were giving Antonio Pierce. They weren't going to give him a long-term deal as a first-time head coach. And Cliff Kingsbury said, well, I can go work for Dan Quinn and have a first-round draft pick and have a five-year contract. Yeah, I'll take that. It was a better deal. With a better situation. Don't fool yourselves. So there you go. Anyway, but Jacob, as always, man, thank you so much for the call. We appreciate it. And he's always, always on point there, even if I disagree with him sometimes. Uh, but but we appreciate that as well. 702-900-7869 is the number if you want to get involved. Let's go to this next text. This is another long one. Um, this one is from north of the border, eh? It's from Tambor up in Calgary. Hey, ho, Flames. Calgary, it says, hey, Scott and Mo, this is my first time reaching out to the show. I wanted to start off by thanking both of you for your hard work. Well, you're welcome. Objective takes and dealing with Raider Nation on X. <laughs> it's fun sometimes doing that. It's been rough. Uh, it's been a rough go this season. Takeaways from the Rams game. Ball security, points off turnovers, poor O-line play. Absolutely. That cost us the game. Defense did what they could. Yep. But you can't expect the defense to continually defend a short field. The only positive was Bowers. With the season likely over, I'd like to share my thoughts and also get your thoughts on the future. First and foremost, we should be able to address the QB position in the draft as we're likely drafting in the top 10. I know we've got other positions of need like running back, wide receiver, O-line, but QB is top priority. Absolutely. By the way, Jacob, that too, they will be in the top. Right now, the Raiders are fifth in the draft as of today. I know it's only seven games, but that's where they're at. Getsy should be fired, Tamber says. He only shows competence on script and on the occasional drive throughout the game. I'd be okay with AP being let go as well in favor of an offensive-minded head coach um, who can be a play caller. I say this with the context that if AP is retained and we bring in a young OC who has success, the likelihood of that OC moving on is much higher and we'd have to reset on the offensive side of the ball. 
Oh, that's a good point. It's much more difficult to replace a good OC than it is a defensive-minded coach who doesn't call plays. Having an offensive-minded head coach like McVay, LaFleur, or Shanahan will give us more long-term stability, in my opinion. Mark Davis and his close circle need to do what they can to try to bring in Ben Johnson, Bobby Slowick, as our head coach and offensive play caller. If AP is retained and assuming Getsy is fired, do you guys have any OC pass game corners we should target besides Johnson and Slowick? I apologize if the message is long. We did keep up the great work, and thanks for taking the time to read my message. All right, there you go. There's Tamber up in Calgary. Thank, thanks, Tamber, for listening up in Canada. Um, look, I, I, I don't disagree with you that that at the very least Antonio Pierce is going to need a good offensive coordinator to come in and who that is. Um, I'm not sure. Now your point about having a head coach, that's an offensive play caller. Yes, that works, but look at Houston. You talk about Bobby Slowick, who's down there in Houston doing, you got D'Amico Ryan's been a very good head coach so far. And he's a defensive head coach, but he's got the offensive guy. So I think if you have continuity and you can get that, even if a guy leaves, so if Bobby Slowick gets a head coaching job somewhere, I, I trust D'Amico Ryan's coming out of that Shanahan tree, coming out of San Francisco. He'll he'll have another guy, either already in the organization to take a step up or someone that he knows who's looking for that step up. So we'll give you thoughts on that as we move along. I think there's a lot of names out there, uh, but it's a little early to find out you know who, who might be available and who's going to go where. So we'll see how that all works out. Uh, all right, we're going to get on to our next call, and that is Misha from Orange County. Misha in Orange County. Here we go. Scott, Mo, what's up? It's Misha calling from Orange County. Uh, it's spooky season. So if there's anybody out there listening, if you love horror movies, look no further than a Raider game on a Sunday. Um, yeah, just just really, really horrific stuff. Um, but I, I had a question for you guys. I mean, at, at this at this point in the season, um, I mean, where, where do we go? Um, if, if we're kind of just throwing in the towel and saying that's a wrap, um, do we just stick with, you know, what we got at, at quarterback with, with Minshew? I know AOC is injured. Um, do we call up Carter Bradley? Um, I know there's been, um, talk about Desmond Ritter coming, um, Bryce Young. No, none of those really excite me, honestly. Um, so actually, Carter Bradley excites me a little bit just because I, I don't really know much about him. So there's that element of, like, he might surprise me and, and do some good things. But, I mean, if we're, if we're thinking that we can save the season, uh, whatever that means, whether it be – you know, being competitive in the last few games or maybe even saving Antonio Pierce's job. Um, but if we're thinking about saving the season, I mean, what what are the options that we're looking at in terms of uh, quarterback position and whether we should just, you know, stick with what we got or do we call up the young fella, Carter Bradley? I would like to see that because um, Bryce Young, nah. I, I, I think I'll pass on that. But um, <laughs> also, I just want to say this. I think it's time Jack Jones gets benched. I don't know if you guys saw the replay, um, but it, it, it's pretty clear. This guy just, I don't know what happened, but he's, he's total lack of effort. Uh, and it's pretty clear on the replay. Anyways, guys, uh, much love. Happy Halloween. And talk to you soon. Bye. All right, Misha down in Orange County, California. Man, thanks for the call. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, and I think you might have called in right before they signed Ritter. But, uh, look, you got Desmond Ritter now. He's a young quarterback as well. Carter Bradley's there. But you're paying, you know, Gardner Minshew $7.5 million a year, a $15 million deal over two. So I think he's going to get his opportunities to play. Now, to see the younger quarterbacks, absolutely. Um, I think if they were really confident – in, in letting Carter Bradley grow and just learn how to play, they probably wouldn't have signed Ritter. I don't know. They needed another quarterback. So we could see Carter Bradley. I don't know. I mean, preseason, no, oh, he looked good in pre... It doesn't matter. Preseason doesn't matter. So, But I think at this point with this team, as Mo and I have been saying the last couple of weeks, you just got to worry about development. So look at your young players, see what you got, let them play. Not worried about wins and losses and what's happening there. I think you have to just let them play um, which, you know, it's not tanking. You're just letting young, inexperienced players do it. And so we're going to see, um, I think, 
what they what they're thinking through playing those guys and seeing what happens. So we'll see how it all ends up. But anyway, Misha, thank you so much for the call. All right, we have um, another text I want to get to here on Silver and Black today. Of course, we are on a special Friday mailbag edition. And this comes from our guy Jay in Pennsylvania. Jay always texts in. <laughs> Jay, Jay leads off by putting in parentheses Mo Psy. And if you know the Mo Psy, that's what Mo does when he's about to make one of those thoughts. And so he says, Mo Psy, I was wondering if you could give me some hope on this. A Antonio Pierce, he's only had 1.5 years of coaching experience in the NFL and before the interim tag. He doesn't call offensive plays. He doesn't call defensive plays or even have experience calling defensive plays. He was a great linebacker, so you would think that the team would take on that identity. Well, they have the most missed tackles in the NFL. He needs multiple people with him, like Lewis and Coughlin, to help him. In your opinion, what does he actually bring to the table? Thank you guys for all you do and shooting it straight with all the fans. And that, again, that's Jay in Pennsylvania. Jay, it's not, it's not popular, and it's not good for us to say this because people don't like to hear it, but... What did he bring to the table? I think um, Antonio Pierce brought emotion. He brought a lot of style. He said all the right things, and he did a good job last year. I mean, taking that team from where they were under Josh McDaniels and doing what he did, you got to give him credit for that. Absolutely. So people who want to, you know, crap on that, I totally disagree with them. He did a, a great job last year. But when, when they went to do the hiring process, Mo and I were very critical here on this show of the fact that the Raiders really didn't do any substantive interviews outside of Antonio Pierce. So you didn't really know what you were going to get. They had their mindset on, and remember, the players lobbied for him to get the job. Understandable, especially with how he came in and rescued them. So when you look at that, that's what he brought. When he was at Arizona State, he did call defensive plays. Uh, and But that's college. You're right. He doesn't have a lot of experience. And the last time, I mean, the most successful, one of the most successful guys you can think of who went right from a position like linebacker coach to head coach and have success, the only one right now that I, that I focus on, and if I missed one, please let me know, is, is uh, Harbaugh in Baltimore. Okay, but that's one example. So what did he bring to the table? I thought he brought a lot of style, and, and he did a good job in a tight situation, just like Rich Passaccia did. But it's a different game when you're the head guy for the full term, and it's your job to get everything going. You're the CEO of the football side of things there, basically, on the field. And, and so from that pers perspective, having Marvin Lewis there, as I've said, I just don't know why. If, is he not listening to them? Are they, is that not kind of the, the exchange they have? Are they, not, are they not telling him, like, hey, dude, you should be doing this, and he does it anyway? We don't know. We don't know. So from that perspective, I think the, the, the jury's still out. I think, you know, you got to have the rest of the season to see if he's able to grow. Now, so far, it's not been good in my view. People don't want to hear it because he was, you know, Mr. Raider. He had the cool jackets and the cool shoes and the cars and da, da, da. Yeah, that's cool. That's great. I mean, I love it too. That's cool stuff. But as he says, resume on the grass. So we'll see what he does and if he's able to bring that. You know, a lot of people thought he's going to bring back the Raider way. Well, the Raider way is not missing tackles and, and running up more penalties and, and mailing it in and not being able to score points. So we'll see. Not all his fault, but he is the guy in charge. So the guy in charge takes the blame even when it's not his fault because he puts the other guys in position to do their jobs. And if he doesn't, then that's a problem. So we'll see how it all unfolds. But, Jay, I appreciate the text message. And as always, thanks for listening to the show. So there you go. That's, that's it for the show. Wanted to get you a nice Friday nugget, hear from all of you out there, and make sure that, uh, that we got your comments up as well. And um, we'll get to more of them next time, right? We'll get to more of them next time. So make sure you do it. 702-900-7869 is a number. You can, as you heard on this show, you can call in or you can send a text and we'll get you on. So we'll do that. By the way, we will not have a post-game show here on Sunday. My daughter's getting married this weekend, so I will be a little busy. And so we're not going to be doing the show on Sunday after the Chiefs game, but we will talk about it next week on Tuesday's show. Mo and I will get there and um, be able to uh, uh, talk about what happened with the Chiefs. So enjoy your weekend. Thanks for being with us. Do us a favor. Make sure you subscribe to the show wherever you get your audio. Don't forget to rate and review. Also, do us a favor and check out our good friends at BetUS who bring you the video side of this. If you're watching the video, thanks. Make sure you thumbs up it. 
Hit the notifications bell and subscribe there too. But BetUS, remember, you can get 150%. This is, dude, this is a great deal. 150% sign up bonus up to $2,000 using the code YouTube150. That's YouTube150. Start playing today. This exclusive offer only available here. Guess what? And on your second and third deposit, just because they like you so much, they're going to give you 125% on second and third deposits up to $2,000. So go check out our good friends at BetUS. Start playing today. We appreciate it. All right. For everybody here at Silver and Black today, including my partner, Mo Moten, including our producer, Mike Robier, have a great weekend, everybody. We will talk to you next week. Enjoy the game on Sunday. Enjoy your weekend. And thanks for being with us. Take care now. Bye-bye.